I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Thank you to Good Game Empire for sponsoring today's episode. Now available for download online and in mobile format from the app stores. A great sword is often the symbol of power for a king. In this case, we're going to be building the sword from Empire, Fury's Blade. It'll be forged, folded, we'll do some casting, some gemstone setting, we'll do some inlay, we'll do some engraving, and it'll show the strength of the king as he builds his empire. In Empire, Fury's Blade has a lot of pretty cool complicated elements, whether it's the carving in the pommel or the forging in the hilt. But the blade has a pretty straightforward classic design. And since it's said to be made by legendary smiths of old, we figured we were going to complicate it a little bit. We're going to make it out of pattern welded steel, better known as Damascus. We're going to take some 15 and 20, which is high nickel bearing content, will be our bright, and some 1095, which will etch darkly, giving us a really nice, beautiful contrast on the blade. So the first thing we got to do is stack it up, alternate the levels, so when we forge weld them together, they give us a beautiful pattern. Really is gonna do some folds, and then he'll draw out the blade from there. Once the billet is completely up to forge welding temperature, Ilya is going to move to the flat dies underneath the power hammer to do his forge weld. He's then going to hot cut and fold several times, resulting in a 400 layer billet that he can then draw out into his blade. going to do a sculpt in epoxy clay of the pommel for Fury's blade in the Empire game. The guy's going to be sand casting this. So we're going to do a really basic version, avoid any heavy undercuts so we get a really good casting the first time. Then we can go back in and finish up some of the detail on it once it comes out. Now that he's drawn out his length, he can turn the billet around, grab it by the point section, and start defining his tang area. So 
we've gotten a good basic sculpt. It's really smooth. We're not going high detail yet because we have to be really careful about undercuts. We have to be careful of the curvatures and the lines on this so that when we do the sand casting, we get a nice clean impression and don't pull the sand back out. You can see I've started to cut in the mouth, but I'm only cutting that in on the profile sides, not the front. We'll do that later and do the final detailing in the metal. The form of the blade is now complete. Ilya purposely left it slightly narrow, so when he forges the bevel, it'll give him his desired width of the finished blade. It's important to note while forging the bevels, you're not pinching the material out. You're actually driving the material into the center, flip-flopping from side to side to make sure you don't get any twist in the blade. We got the blade back from Ilya. He's done forging. As we said before, this is pattern welded. He started with 25 layers. He did four folds. So he went 25 to 50 to 100 to 200 and resulting in a 400 layer blade. It's my job now to basically grind through the scale and reveal that pattern. But first, I'm gonna start along the perimeter of the blade, remove some of the hammer marks that naturally occur when you forge bevels. Then I'll establish the sharp central ridge up the center of the blade, and then we'll be ready to heat treat it. When making a blade this long with really straight edges, sometimes it's nice to take a file before heat treat and skate it along the edge, making sure it's nice and flat, removing any of those little bumps that you might have missed on the grinder. At this point, the blade is now ready for the heat treating process. Ilya is going to place the blade into the long heat treating furnace, adjusting the propane and the air carefully to make sure the blade is heated evenly. Once he's satisfied with that temperature, he's going to remove the blade and quench it in the oil. We then move straight to the vise. We have a few seconds to play around to get it as straight as possible and then clamp it in the vise and leave it to cool slowly. Now that we successfully hardened and tempered our sword blade, it's time to move on to the finished grinding and then on to the polishing. Now one unfortunate thing that did happen during the hardening is we got a little sabering to the blade. You can see that it's curved just a little bit to this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit off the point here a little bit down here by the shoulder, make everything nice and straight again, and then move on to the grinding. I'm using silicon bronze that requires 2100 degrees to be flowing smoothly. Once the material reaches this temperature, I'll take it out of the furnace, pick it up using the shank, and pour it into my mold.
now that the sand and the bronze has cooled sufficiently, I'll be able to break it out, pull the piece out, clean it off, and we'll begin to finish this pommel. To forge the preform on our guard for this sword, Billy is going to use a series of top tools. He has to create several offsets before drawing out the tines of the guard. This guard actually has a lot of tricky form to it. Ilya's gonna have to utilize just about every part of the anvil to get the job done. He's gotta take his time, because both sides have to be exactly the same. Bill's going to go to the sander and begin to rough grind the guard. We've got some rough forging here, and it's a little out of whack. It'll have to be straightened. But he's going to true up the general surface so that we can see what needs to be done, and then Ilya will take it in the furnace and straighten it back up. After heat treating, we're going to be tempering this blade. Ilya places the blade into hot canola oil. He's going to be watching as it creeps up and reaches 400 degrees. He'll hold it at that temperature for a couple of hours before we take it out, let it cool, and begin the grind. Using a small radius wheel, Matt now cuts the ricasso into this blade. This is where we're going to do what we're going to call habaki. It'll be laid over that surface and brassed as well as the guard. Ilya now engraves King Leopold's crown upon this guard. John applies heat to the guard and then uses a solid brass wire wheel to lay brass onto the surface. With our blade now polished and our ricasso area scooped in, 
The next step is to go ahead and put our initial etch onto the blade itself. We got a little hibaki type fitting that fits underneath the guard right in this section. It would make it a little more tricky to try to etch it afterwards. So let's go ahead and get a sneak peek. Go ahead and take a look. See the pattern? It's just random, it's beautiful. I'm just using a scotch brite pad to scuff the surface. Then we're gonna stick the blade back into the etch, fair chloride etch, for about an hour. It's pretty cold out, so it'll take a little longer than normal. And then afterwards, we'll be ready to mount it up. One of the very last tasks we have to do before assembling the sword is to go ahead and set the red gem on the forehead of the lion pommel. Carrie's gonna use a special tool, carefully bend over the prongs, capturing the gym in place. I'm really pleased with the way Fury's blade turned out. Making something like this in Damascus and forging all the items, casting the pommel and setting the gemstone is much like it would be done on a historical counterpart. It's quite a weapon, and now we can see how it works. Thanks to Good Game Empire and Empire Four Kingdoms for sponsoring this episode. Make sure to check out the game and look for a chance to win the sword in the upcoming Battle for Fury's Blade event.